You couldn't do a show on bluegrass music without having the man who invented it. That's right, folks. Bill Monroe, a living legend. He's a singer, a songwriter. He's also a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame. Yet he's still out there on the road, week in and week out, picking and singing his distinctive style of music. Bluegrass music was always really big. I grew up with it. It's in that part of the Appalachian area where, well, I started school in Black in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Then we went up to Iron, and everybody played bluegrass music. Yeah, I played all through that country there. Yeah, they love you there. And, of course, you're known as the father of bluegrass music. Now, uh, where did bluegrass music get its name? Well, I'm from the state of Kentucky, you know, and it, mm -hmm. it's a bluegrass state, so I wanted to call my name my music after that, the bluegrass, so the people would know I was from Kentucky, you see. And uh, they wouldn't have to worry about where I was from and everything. Was it always... Was it always known as bluegrass music, or what kind of music did you play no, before I, bluegrass? Well, you know, I worked with my brothers uh, five or six years, something like that, and it just was Monroe Brothers. And we had the old-time country and mountain style of singing and playing, you know. And then uh, uh, we broke up in 1938, so I wanted to get a have a music of my own, so I went to put in what I should what I thought should be in the music, you know, and everything. Uh, the driving behind the music, you know, and everything. And so uh, it taken a long time. A lot of music I had to keep out of it, you know. But I put some blues and a little bit of jazz and the old Scotch bagpipe, a little bit of Irish music, you know, the old-time fiddle music, and a lot of gospel singers in bluegrass music like the Methodist, Baptist, and Holiness like that. But it's got a a drive to it that no other music ever had. And check back over and you'll see rock and roll got its time from bluegrass music. Oh, for sure, because first, the first rock and roll song I ever heard was uh, Blue Moon in Kentucky. Yeah, that's right. By Elvis. Right. And I kind of, you know, I kind of resented that. That was before I realized what was happening. Yes, sir. But I kind of resented him taking a, a song like that and, and uh, but then, of course, later I became an Elvis fan. I loved it. Well, Bobby, uh, you know, he was a guest on the Grand Ole Opry one Saturday night. And he come over to, to my dressing room and uh, made himself acquainted and, and told me that he was sorry that he uh, changed Blue Moon of Kentucky uh, from the way I sang it, you know, and the way he recorded it. And I told him, well, if he'd helped him get a start, you know, and give him a different style of music, why, well, I was, it was all right with me. So that's the way it stood with me. And help us. Well, now you wrote all those uh, uh, Blue Moon in Kentucky and Kentucky Walls. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. What do you think was the biggest song you ever wrote? I guess Blue Moon of Kentucky was. 